So coming off of the Gorilla Collective, we have a really cool game that I want to talk to you guys about today called West of Dead. This has a very, very distinct, gritty, dark art style, and I absolutely love it. It takes full advantage of some really interesting shadow effects that always kind of puts you on the defensive, even when you're supposed to be on the offensive. And I think that's definitely one of the great hooks of the game. It is a procedural shooter that stars you as this dead cowboy, I guess? <laughs> Not really sure what you did in the life before this world, but you definitely know how to handle a gun. And you are basically in this never-ending hell kind of purgatory, and you have to fight your way through. Every time you die, like I just did right there, the game will reset and put you back at the beginning for a fresh new run. And they even call it a run. Now this is very, very roguelike. This is a very common theme in these procedurally generated games in which you're gonna start progressing through the story, you're gonna unlock new weapons, you're gonna unlock new skills, you may get a bit of story. And then when you die, it's all gone, and you have to start over again. I love this style of gameplay. It lends itself to insane amount of replayability for a few reasons. One, the um, weapons that you earn, you do lose. So you're going to always be getting new weapons. You're going to be getting different combinations of weapons. Sometimes you're going to be sporting very heavy, powerful shotguns. Sometimes you're going to be sporting this really interesting gun they call a five shot. Uh, the one that I actually had, the fifth shot, was always critical, so that's kind of cool. So you're going to be mixing up your weaponry. You're going to be mixing up some of the items that you get to help you. Sometimes it's things that increase your defense or give you a faster reload speed or allow you to throw a stick of dynamite. There's tons of options there. And on top of everything else, you will slowly be earning two very, very important uh, currencies, um, iron and sin. Now, iron is used for that specific run, and you can cash it in at various shops to get upgraded items or weapons. Sin is something that is, uh, not procedurally, that is persistent, that will carry with you through every single run. So as you begin to unlock things, you will be able to have them. It will make future runs, I won't say easier, but definitely different. Whether it's an additional health potion, well, I guess that's actually gonna help you out, or some kind of ability or a chance to spawn a particular gun at a loadout. These are things that are gonna continue to advance your gameplay. Um, there, this isn't anything new, by the way. This isn't like some novel concept. This is basically roguelike procedural generated games 101. So what makes West of Dead so different than everything else? What makes this one really stand out? Well, I think the art style is definitely something that has to be highlighted and really celebrated because it's really, really pretty. It's just something that I haven't really seen a lot before. Probably the closest I've seen is another procedurally generated game, uh, Hades which is currently on the Epic Games Store. That has a similar art style here where everything is almost cartoon-like and how vibrant it is. Definitely a very unique version of cell shading. Outside of that, I like it because unlike a lot of these other twin-stick shooter dungeon, you know, crawlers, Enter the Gungeon's a perfect example, Nuclear Throne's a great example. Those kind of games are straight run and gun. You're going to spawn in and you're going to just go to, go to town on everybody, constantly spinning around, shooting as fast as possible. This game seems to be a lot more slower and more deliberate. And I like that because it is a nice change of pace. Now, it does recommend that you play it with a controller. And I was using a keyboard and mouse, although I don't really think that that would really have impacted my gameplay too much. I think I might have actually been a little twitchier on a mouse than on a twin stick. However, I want to point out that your character takes a while to reload, and that's where I seem to die the most, is having to stop the action and to reload to kind of reassess the situation and 
it takes a few seconds. You're not going to run out of ammo, but you're definitely going to not going to be able to kill everybody in the first go round. You may miss a shot. Enemies are definitely a little beefier in some places over others, like and they're going to be attacking you and flanking you. It's going to require you to kind of roll around and to try to time the shots that you have at the best place that you can. Since ammo is free and you're only really limited to cooldown, the other mechanic that they've put in this game is an automatic cover system. So running behind any piece of cover will automatically put you in cover, which is really nice. It basically prevents you from being hurt and it allows you to shoot over the cover to hurt an enemy. That's really useful because enemies do shoot and cover will eventually get destroyed. It does keep the game, the flow of the game moving kind of nicely. Um, and I do like that. One of the other really cool mechanics and um, one that you see me use quite a bit is the lantern mechanic where when you run up to any low hanging light, you can basically punch it or whatever and it explodes and it not only illuminates the entire area, which is phenomenal because you can see where all the enemies are, but it also temporarily stuns everybody. And that gives you a really good advantage to either run in with a shotgun or something and try to do an insane amount of damage rapidly or to quickly dive away. But it's basically almost the mechanic that they almost want you to run and hit that light first just so you can see what you're dealing with and then fall back and kind of figure out how to assess the situation. But that's the joy of this kind of game. There's really no right or wrong way on how to play it as long as you stay alive. You can easily kite enemies back through the hallways and the rooms that you've been in. So you can kind of pick them off one at a time. You can play more run and gun style or somewhere in between. And it's going to really depend on your loadout and it's going to really depend on, you know, what kind of skills that you are, you know, or accessories that you've unlocked. So uh, one of the playthroughs I unlocked, one that allowed me to reload rapidly. And I love that because I felt like I was much more ready for anything that came my way. Um, later on, I didn't get that ability and I found myself being extremely slow and very meticulous and kind of taking my time to work through everything. So you're going to have a couple different options to play. Uh, additionally, um, like right here, you occasionally will run across um, these shrines that allow you to have a free upgrade. So it's going to automatically, just for this run, give you something. And that will also definitely change the way you play as well. Because that's going to kind of force you to think about what build you want. Again, with all of these roguelike games, there's really no way of knowing what you're going to get. You may start building your character in one way and get some perk or some weapon that absolutely changes the way you think about things. And I love that. It's a lot of really fun, you know, just what's going to happen next kind of thing. Now, the one thing I want to focus on, though, on top of all of the amazing gameplay and the amazing graphics is the amazing voiceover by Ron Perlman, who has such an iconic, gritty voice, it just absolutely fits with this character. He is your player character, and he will narrate the entire time you are playing. He will narrate after particularly tough fights, new weapons, every time you die, new levels, and he always has something witty to say about the situation. Now, I'm sure, I mean, I've only played the beta for, you know, 45 minutes or so. I'm sure some of those lines may get somewhat repetitive, but they're cool because they're kind of informative of what your character is going through. Like after a particularly nasty firefight, you can kind of hear him huffing and puffing saying he needs to heal up and he can't take much more of that. You find a new weapon, he'll say something about you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's really nice to have him as kind of a narrator over the entire game, but not so much in an annoying way, in my opinion, like in Transistor where the narrator just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> this actually makes sense in kind of how he talks to you, and I really, really appreciate that. The other part I want to focus on is the really clever sound design that they do. There's always these really neat little guitar riffs that occur in every single room after you clear out an area and it's very refreshing when you're shooting into the darkness and then you hear that riff and you're like ah i made it it's over um i can't recommend this game enough it is currently right now available for um you can try it out on steam for free it's coming to both xbox and to steam on june 18th I'm sure it's going to be kind of one of those early access in development type games. There's still stuff they need to do. They're very vocal about that. And I, I did browse on their Discord for a little bit just to kind of see what, um, what was going on in their Discord. 
and the fans there are really, really cool and you know, really excited. It's fun to chat with everybody about the game and see what's going on. But um, this is one not to sleep on, I think. I, I feel like, you know, it's very easy to get saturated in these roguelike games and they do follow a very, you know, standard pattern of how you play them, how you advance them. But I feel like this game does enough with other things. The, the reload mechanic is definitely very, very interesting. Um, the story seems gripping enough that you're, you know, wanting to kind of find out what happens next continually upgrading your character and getting stronger getting farther and farther into the dungeon and then on top of that you're narrated by ron perlman so i think this is a home run um i highly recommend it um i don't have a price on it yet uh, right now there's just a placeholder on the steam store but if you're interested by the time you watch this video most likely it will be out on your platform of choice assuming your platform of choice of course is pc or xbox uh their site does seem to indicate that they will be porting it to other platforms in the future um i think this would look great on any platform the graphics aren't really over the top so i don't think you're going to have any kind of performance issue I think what you're really going to end up focusing on is just where do you want to spend a lot of your time playing because I think once you start playing this and you get into the art style and you get into the story, it's one of those games you're not going to want to put down. Hope you guys enjoyed my first look at West of Dead. Really enjoy this one. Absolutely check it out. Check out their website. I'll post a link in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.